on shape birdhouse assignment here's your directions you're going to be given two days in class to recreate this birdhouse you're going to use on shape to do so i'm giving you written directions and this tutorial video use them both okay if any student gets the regular part done and they want to add anything extra to their birdhouse for extra credit they can do so how much extra credit will they get well that depends on how nice the stuff looks that they add extra and the difficulty of the extra stuff here's your link to log into on shape Here's our tutorial video section right here once I'm done making it. And here is your document for help. What's an example submission look like? I see your name up here in the top right hand corner and I see a good isometric view of everything that you did. Then you have your submission options down here. So let's get started. Once you get logged in on shape, you're going to go to the front plane. You're going to draw a center point rectangle that starts at the origin. Three wide, four tall. So. Here's my complete one. Here's the one I'm making with you guys on the video. Front of my cube, sketch on the front. Make sure I go to center point rectangle instead of corner. If you use center point rectangle, it's gonna make some steps later on much easier. So I'm gonna click here, go out. How big for the bottom? Three. How big for the top? Four. Okay, and if your numbers are hidden a little bit and you wanna see them better, just hit escape to so turn off the line, the rectangle tool and then you just move them so you can see better. So what do I do next? We're going to start a line at the center of the top of the rectangle, make it go somewhere to the right side. Then we're going to do the same on the left. Be careful not to constrain it against anything. Okay, so I'm going to say line tool or L on the keyboard, and it needs to start right here at the center of the top. Well, this is one of the reasons we made a center point rectangle. Look, we already know the center. So I'm just going to go over here. It's over here. All right, now I need to do it on the left. So here, I want this part of the roof to actually move with this side. So there's two ways you can do it. You can just straight up do this, and then you're just going to have to dimension both sides. Or you can do it the way I'm going to do it, where you just take your line tool, you hover your mouse here, and you just drag it to the left, follow the yellow line. And now you click here, and it goes to that. So that means this dot is always going to be connected to this dot right there. So when I get to this next step, where I make it so that they're both one inch down from the top, I only have to do that once. If you don't constrain them, two's fine, whatever. So dimension button, D on your keyboard, dimension right here. I want from right here to right here to be one inch. So I type in one and you saw it moved both sides. Okay, if yours did not move on both sides, it means you did not connect this dot to this dot. So what would you do? You would just say, I wanna move this dot to this dot and I want that to be an inch. Well. If I did it, I'm going to get an error because it's already an inch, so I'm not going to. So mine looks exactly like this. I have that inch gap between those two spots in the top, and I have those sizes right. So we're going to rename this sketch the body sketch and call that sketch done. Rename, body sketch, done. Now we are going to extrude everything except for the two triangles on the top, four inches, and make it symmetric. Rename it body extrude. So this section right here is not going to get extruded, and neither is this section over here. So extrude this part right here. So do not click over here this time because you don't want everything. You don't want the triangles. They are right here. And watch this. When I say my four inches, look, it all sticks out the front. I don't want that. I want it symmetric, so it's going to make one of my steps later when I make the pole easier. So symmetric, boom. Now it has two inches on the front and the back of this plane. It's going to make the pole easier later. So there's our main body. Right click here, rename it body. Now our body's done, so we're going to move on to the roof. I'm going to do this one slower and make sure that I break some of these steps up so it's easier to follow. We're going to start a sketch on the front plane. We're going to use project convert the top left angled line from the previous body. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go back to the front of my cube. I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane, not the front of the object. The front plane is what I want. After I do that, I want to use and project convert this line right here. This line does not exist on this sketch yet, but you can see that it exists somewhere else. I want it on this sketch, though, so I'm going to click on it. Now it's here, too. Okay. After it's here, we're going to create an offset line that is 0.25 inches up from that. So the offset button is going to be right here, offset. You're going to click on that line that we just made, and you want it to go up. So click on your arrow. Now it's up. 
You hit enter, and now it says how big do you want it? Well, 0.25 is what I already wanted, so that's perfect. So that line is now 0.25 away from the other one. The next step, we're going to connect the projected line and the offset line with straight lines. If you cannot do so, you need to extend the, the lines from the previous sketch. So I need to extend mine because this going straight up and down wouldn't make any sense. And if I went straight up here, that wouldn't connect. So how do you extend? It is either the X button on your keyboard or you hit this drop down and you click on extend. I'm going to click once on that dot right here. I'm going to extend it up there and I'm going to click on that dot, extend it down here. Now, if I make a straight up and down line, they'll connect here and a straight horizontal line, they're going to connect there. So line tool, start at this dot right here and it goes to that. Now line tool here and it goes straight over to that. Escape to turn my line tool off. Can I delete this extra line here I don't need anymore? Yeah, I can. Can I do the same thing over there? Yeah, I can also. But make sure you don't click on it, delete. If you want to get rid of it, make sure you hit the trim button, which is also M on your keyboard. So you can get rid of that there. And you can get rid of that there. But does it really matter if you get rid of it? Not really, because you're just going to tell it to extrude the other stuff anyways. So that is that part right there. We're going to rename that the roof sketch and hit finish. So this is going to be roof sketch. Check mark it. And what does our next step say? We are going to extrude the previous sketch five inches. Make it symmetric and make it new. Not add. And then we're going to rename it roof. Okay. So extrude. What am I extruding? Well, I'm going to click on that little section right there. And what did I say? It needs to be new, not add, right? And you're going to see why in a few. So new. It's going to be a new piece of material. And it should stick out five inches, not one. But we don't want it all to go out the front. So we want it to be symmetrical, symmetric. Okay. And there it's gray and this is blue, which means they're two different colors. That means the new worked. So I'm going to hit my button right here and I'm going to just rename it roof. Next, I'm going to part mirror that to the other side and then I'm going to merge it together. So what does that look like? This. So finish that sketch. And now I want to mirror that side of the roof to the other side. Okay. So what you need to do, find the mirror button, right? Mirror. This time, you want to make sure it stays as a part mirror, not feature or face. So part mirror, and it says, what do you want to mirror? That. And then nothing happens because you need to select the mirror plane. So click on that, and you say you want it to be that. Look, now it's on both sides, but you have three parts, so you only want it to be two. So what you want to do is change this to an add, and you merge scope, click on this right here. So now... The roof is one piece and the body is one piece. Now we just need to hollow out the main body. And that section is under the roof and you're going to see why. So we're going to hit the eyeball to hide the roof. It's not deleted. We're just hiding it. Then we're going to shell the birdhouse to a 0.25. And then we're going to hit the eyeball again to show it. So part two over here is my roof. So I'm going to hit the eyeball. Now I'm going to find my shell button, which is right here. And I'm going to say I want to get rid of that and that. And then I said make it 0.25. Okay. Then you hit your, oops, there's an extra point in there. Here we go. After you do that, you hit your check mark. So now our birdhouse is hollow so things can get inside of it. And then what do you have to do? Just hit your eyeball and your roof is back. Why did we make the roof a new part earlier instead of an add? That way we can hide it, the roof and stuff. That's why we did it. So now we're going to do our doorway and peg. So start a sketch. And we're on the front of the previous object. Let me restart that sentence. On the front of your birdhouse, you're going to start a sketch. You're going to make a one inch center point circle at the origin. So front view. Start a sketch on the front of this shape. We're going to go center point circle at the origin, which is right here. Draw it, and then it's an inch. We're going to rename that the whole sketch. So click here, whole sketch. And then we're going to hit our check mark. We're going to remove extrude the previous circle. And we're going to change a few settings on there and change the name. So 
we're going to change it from blind to up the next and rename it. So I'm going to say extrude that circle, change it to remove. And how much do I want it to take out? Well, you can see where that shadow is. It's way back there. Do I know that the shell was 0.25 in my case? Yeah, I do. But what if I change that later? So how do I prevent that from messing up? So I'll just say up to next, which means this is always going to remove a, no matter the thickness of the shell. So there's that. Our hole is now made right there. So we're going to fill it both sides, 0.125 each. Why 0.125 each? Because that is 0.25 divided by 2. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better. Fill it right there. You're going to click on the outside of the circle. Then you're going to click on the inside of the circle. Okay. And you're going to say 0.125. And you hit your check mark. Now that is a round hole for your bird to get in and out of. Now we're going to start a sketch on the front of the birdhouse, just under the hole, just a little bit under. We're going to draw a center point circle that is 0.25 inches in diameter. And then we're going to rename that sketch Peg Sketch. So front view of my cube over here. Zoom in. Sketch on the front of our birdhouse. We're going to center point circle and remember since our origin was right here, this is what makes this assignment so much easier if you're using the origin and center points and symmetrics. So I'm just going to go a little bit under the hole. I'm going to say right there. Okay. And then I'm going to say 0.25. So I have a 0.25 inch circle. And now we're just going to extrude that an inch. And it's going to be a new instead of an add. And we're going to rename it peg. So this is the peg sketch check mark it. We're going to extrude the peg sketch by one inch, but we also want it to be a new part. And now it's going to stick out an inch. Okay. And we're going to rename that the peg. And now we have a place for the bird to just chill right by its window or door. So we're wrapping this up. We need to make a base and a pole at the bottom of it. So we're going to go to the bottom view, start a center point rectangle on the bottom of the birdhouse. It should be one and a half by one and a half. So turn it so I can see the bottom of my cube. Click on that. Sketch on the bottom of the birdhouse. Center point rectangle. Go right here. And what size did I tell you guys? One five, one five. So 1.5 enter, 1.5 enter. Okay. After we do that, we're going to extrude that by half an inch and mark it as new instead of add. So check mark that. Extrude the square we just made. Make sure it's a new part instead of an add. And how far did I tell you? 0.5. So if I turn it, you can see the start of the base of this now. But we want it to look a little nicer. So what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer all the sides with these settings. Offset, equal distance, and 0.1. So let's go right here to our chamfer. I'm going to click on that, 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 and that. And instead of 1.5, that should default it to if I put 0.1, I won't have any errors anymore. The reason I had an error before was there's no way I could have chamfered it 1.25 inches when the whole thing was one and a half. I couldn't have done it twice. So you have every four, sorry, all four edges. It's offset, it's equal distance, and it's 0.1. Then you hit your check mark. Now you can see how it kind of looks nice on the bottom. Last step, we are going to make the little pole that sticks out. Start a new sketch on the bottom of our created base. So let's do that first. So back to my bottom view, start a sketch on this little section right here. After I do that, I am going to draw a one inch circle from the origin. And then I'm going to create another circle by offsetting that point one. It should face the inside of the first one. Okay. So center point circle right here. That should be an inch one enter. Now I need to do the interior circle. So offset. 
click on that. I don't want my arrow to face out, so I'm going to click on it. Now it faces in. So I hit enter. And how big did I tell you to make that little space? Should be 0.1. So 0.1, enter. And now all we have to do is extrude that six inches. Make sure it's an add. So check mark, extrude just the area between the circles. Not here, not out here, the area between the circles. Make it six inches. Make sure it's still an add. We hit our check mark. And now we have a pole that sticks out the bottom of it. So it should look like this now. Last step that I would do if I were you, especially if you're going toward the extra credit, you should rename the parts on the left so you know what is what. So remember, if you hover over it, it tells you what it is. So if I hover over this, that's the body. So I'll just say right click, rename. That's the body. Part two, I hover over that. Well, that's clearly the roof. So right click, rename, roof. Part three right here. Hover over that, and that's the little thing that sticks out. So I'm going to say right-click, rename, and name that the peg. And part four is obviously what's left, which is the base. So I'm just going to rename that the base or the pole, whatever you want. So what would you do? You turn it to a nice symmetric view next. So I can see that you did everything the way you're supposed to. Turn it a little bit so I can see that base. Zoom in a little, screenshot this, go to Canvas, turn it in, and now your birdhouse is done.